Hello everyone, Anita here and welcome to another video. Today we are doing a review of the oh, Arteza 72 Fine Liners set. Um, Arteza was very kind to send me a huge box full of different supplies. So, you know, be prepared for more reviews in the near future because I am having way too much fun playing with all the new stuff. I'm going to try and do my best uh, and be a bit more organized. So the first portion of this video will be, you know, will be very informational uh, and hopefully to the point. And later on, I will just let myself ramble a little bit more um, while I doodle in my sketchbook. So the art portion will come later. So the set I've been sent uh, consists of 72 fine liners, uh, but you can also get those in sets of 48 and 24. They, well, they come in a metal tin, uh, which for me is a huge plus, you know? You can see me unpacking it in the background there. It's a huge plus for me because I tend to store my supplies uh, in their original packaging and uh, they look very elegant. That's That was my first thought I, when I opened them. They look very elegant, like they mean business. <laughs> um, they do feel really sturdy and they feel very high quality. The plastic is thick. Uh, there are no weird bits hanging off, you know, like you sometimes have in, in production. Um, and, which is my favorite part, <laughs> they are triangular. Um, I hate when my pens are rolling off the table, uh, especially when I use a lot of them, which is in this case, yeah, bound to happen because you have 72 of them. All of the fine liners uh, have unique colors. Uh, some of them are really close to each other, but they are all definitely unique. <laughs> I checked. Uh, at some point I was actually wondering why they weren't coded somehow. You know, like you have numbers or, or names on them on other supplies, you know, because that's what you would expect from an art supply. But honestly, it really didn't bother me afterwards. I never actually look at numbers anyway when I thought about it. I do test them too, all oh, before drawing anyway. And I do everything, so... Because you, you can never trust the cap. And in this case, you know, the caps do a decent job at showing the ink color. They do. They really try hard. In some cases, they do a better job. <laughs> and in other cases, you know, not so much. <laughs> it is a little bit annoying for me because, you know, when you pick up a fine liner to paint with, that's the first thing you, you, you kind of pick the color by the cap. But honestly, the colors are usually off only slightly. It's a shade darker, maximum two shades darker. And I haven't seen one that made me question <laughs> whether or not I'm actually colorblind, you know, that, that, that was completely a different color. The pens are really juicy. And while they do a pretty decent job on regular printer paper, they don't soak through. You can see them, but they don't soak through. I do suggest using them on something thicker. If you're like me and you like to scan your sketches, then you definitely want something thicker or paint on one side only. Oh, and they are definitely not waterproof. I checked and they are not. I wanted to use them with watercolors initially, but they are not. But Honestly, I can see potential in that. <laughs> I, I did some doodles. So there is a link in the description where you can see all the sets and their prices. I believe they are all on sale now and they ship all worldwide. So um, it's a great opportunity to pick them up. Well, worldwide. Um, they ship to Europe and it's an American company. That's good enough for me. <laughs> okay, uh, I think I've covered all the basic information. Um, I hope so, at least. So now I will relax a bit and get to sketching uh, because you have no idea how hard it is to stop myself from rambling, okay? I'm not made for that. <laughs> the fine liners have arrived at the exactly perfect moment when I have just restarted the 365 days um, sketchbook challenge I have been trying to do since August last year and failing. But I've tried it again. This time I'm trying to be a little bit more free and experimenting and so experimentative to, you know what I mean <laughs> and so the fine liners were a perfect opportunity to do that because I've actually never drawn with so many fine liners at the same time uh, I mean everybody doodles I love to doodle and I've been doing it since you know school times like probably everybody uh, but I've always done it with just a regular ballpoint pen. 
Um, I've never actually done it in color. So this was a bit of a learning curve and I'm still, you know, learning even now. <laughs> but I think I've got the basics down. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about what I'm doing, uh, what I will be doing <laughs> on this uh, in, in, on, on, on this page. So whenever I don't know what to draw, um, and chances are I, you know, rarely know what to draw. I, I love to draw um, citrus slices, uh, citrus fruit slices. Um, so whenever you see them, um, there are really, really, really high chances that I just didn't know what to draw. And I started with a citrus slice. So for example, in one of the previous uh, pages that you've seen me doing there, um, I've actually started with citrus slices and then I made them into little turtles. So it's a very versatile technique, like very versatile thing to draw. Um, and I don't know that what, they're, what it is about citrus slices that appeals to me so much, but they're just so comfortable to draw. And so um, I have my Pinterest pages always filled with, with citrus fruit. And I saw this one picture that was um, just some lemons. And I really love that contrast between this really, really bright, warm yellow and dark, cool gray. So I just wanted to draw lemons. <laughs> and that's something I don't really show here a lot. I mean, my uh, pictures are always something that's really thought through and it has a, a story or some characters or something like that. And I never really draw um, just, you know, basic stuff. <laughs> um, and I've recently have been just wanting to draw some basic things that don't require me to think too much. Uh, don't require preparation, it's just exactly this, a doodle. And so in this case, you know, I've decided to draw those um, those lemons, although I have to admit that bottom one just looks like a turnip. Okay, let's just put it out there right now, it's a lemon turnip. <laughs> and so I'm drawing one lemon, <laughs> one lemon turnip, <laughs> and a lemon slice. Um, and I'm starting with, I've picked up a few colors, um, and one problem I really have with this set, and probably the only major problem I have with this set, is that uh, there is a really big imbalance in color, unbalanced colors, like, you know. So, for example, you have plenty of pinks and blues and purples, uh, tons of greens, and then you have one proper yellow and really one proper red, okay? Um... Not even because what I would expect, you know, this kind of set is to have, for example, one warm yellow and w one cooler yellow. Uh, would technically, if you're really pushing it, you can find that cool yellow, but it's still not really a yellow. Um, the only yellow, the yellow I'm using here, I'm having it in my hand right now uh, with the green in my right other hand, left hand. Um, yeah. It's the only yellow, proper yellow in the set. And similarly, there's only one red, um, which really, because it's a beautiful red and I was really inspired by that red to draw some strawberries. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm drawing lots of fruits in my free time. Um, but unfortunately, I wanted to have different shades of red, maybe um, some more pinkish red or some, you know, just more yellowy red. Um, but no, there was just unfortunately this one red. So I ended up using just pinks, uh, which I guess, you know, you could say that they are um, reddish, but they're, no, it's just really one red. Now, I haven't really gotten that much into layering colors, so perhaps uh, in the future I'm going to try and see what happens if I mix, you know, some of the colors together and try to get red. At least the appearance of red, I mean, right? Because the thing with fine liners is with this kind of drawing is that you're not really filling the whole space with the color. You're just doodling. You're, um, I suppose you can say you're cross hatching. It's not exactly cross hatching, but um, you're just kind of giving a hint of a color rather than a color, like a full flat color. And so, what, what's possible here is that because there is that white space in between um, the color, that white space, if you're really careful, can be filled with some other color that will kind of change the overall the way it, the color looks. Um, that's at least that's how I've been 
trying to draw with my uh, with these fine liners. So uh, I am layering a little bit and then I'm also filling those spaces and you will see me doing that later with the leaves especially. I'm filling that white space with a different color just to have it a little bit more interesting. And I think I'm going to experiment a little bit more with the reds, um, not so much with the yellows. Uh, although there are some very light colors that could potentially maybe read as yellow. I don't know. We will see, but definitely reds. We'll see how that works. I mean, there's plenty of experiments uh, in front of me. I mean, I'm still very curious how fast I'm going to start running out of the fine liners uh, of the ink. Uh, I still haven't. None of them are dry. Uh, I mean, these are absolutely amazingly smooth. Uh, they're super juicy and they just draw really smooth. I've never had, you know what it means when I, when, you know, when you, when it snags, I don't know how to call it, but when a fine liner snags, it's when it's kind of the ink, um, kind of breaks a little bit. I mean, ballpoint pens do it a lot. Um, I mean, my black fine liners sometimes do it. <laughs> These are not doing it at all. I mean, um, I suppose it also has to do a lot with the nib. The nib is a little bit uh, thicker than what I'm used to. I'm using like an 0.05. Um, that's like, I don't, like 0.05. That's really, really small. Uh, this one is 0.4. So it's a little bit thicker. Initially, I thought it would be too thick, actually, because I'm used to very, very thin fine liners, but Actually, it's it's perfect for what it's being used for. Um, I mean, if I really want some delicate, fine details, I can always come back with a uh, with a black fine liner. Um, so I don't really like. It's it's really hard for me to tell you. <laughs> I'm trying to find something that I don't like about these. Um, because, you know, the one thing is, of course, the color imbalance. Um, that's definitely a problem. I think, uh, I think I would really love more, like at least one or two more reds and then one more maybe yellow. I feel like it's fair because there are just so many greens. I mean, you can see me, uh, you will see me later fl flipping uh, to, the, to the front. And I also had a little bit of a um, footage in the, in the beginning where I'm just going through the colors. And if you look at them, there's plenty of greens, plenty of blues, pinks, purples, and there is one red. <laughs> I mean, I understand that red is maybe not the most popular color, but if you're doing um, fine liners for like art fine liners that are meant for artists, then yeah, it definitely should be more colors, uh, color variations. Um, so here you could actually see me doing the thing I was talking about. I've added a little bit of a, a teal color to the ends of the leaves just to have them a little bit more interesting. And that's one thing that I've noticed um, with the layering of fine liners is that you have to be really careful about it because it can really go muddy fast. Uh, one of the chickens I've done on the previous pages, um, I, I wanted it to be like a gradienty kind of from pink to um pink to, to through gray and then to blue but actually the blues and grays and pinks they all melted together in this weird gray very dark purple color just because these are so saturated and so juicy the colors um when they are layered you know the, too haphazardly i suppose what i've been doing uh on that picture they combine into this very, very dark mass. Because, of course, that's what colors do eventually when you mix them like that. And you have to remember these colors will be transparent, so they are going, they're not going to mix uh, together and they are not, um, you're not going to be able to, for example, layer lighter colors on top of darker colors. So whatever you, whatever color you're putting over, you're going to be able to see the color underneath. So yeah, it's kind of an obvious thing, right? But I had to experience it firsthand to actually realize it, um, the effect. But overall, if you're, uh, if the color choice is um, close, I suppose, then the effect is really nice. It was just in that case of that one chicken, pink and blue <laughs> and gray. 
Okay, that's that's too that's too too much. But in this case, I'm layering uh, some different versions of that. Well, one is yellow and one is a little bit like a yellow ochre. I suppose it's a really nice brownish yellow. It's more brown than yellow, I would say, but it's definitely, it's not a bright yellow. Um, but it layers really nicely over. That's why I'm not that mad, not as mad or at, um, at yellows as I am at reds. As you can hear, uh, see here, I'm kind of checking because I want another yellow. I wanted really a different yellow, but there is no yellow <laughs> that I could use. Um, so I ended up actually going back with the yellow uh, that I've been using with the very bright yellow and just thickening it a little bit and going over something kind of like, I suppose, what you would do in colored pencils. Um, and that layer kind of gave that brightness that I was looking for. So that's the only thing. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it, I suppose. I mean, I'm like I've said, I'm still, I can't really tell you how it's going to be in a month time, but um, definitely worth trying. Um, and I will be, I will constantly, I will keep drawing. You know, I will keep drawing, and we'll see how it turns out. Um, because I'm actually really curious. Uh, here as a last step, I'm adding a little bit of a darker shade. It's actually not black. It's a very dark green. Uh, a very dark, like a sap green almost, I guess. I guess. <laughs> uh, and that's pretty much my last step with this because uh, one of the things I'm trying to learn is not to overwork it. Uh, the fine liners can be so easily overworked and that's when it also gets muddy. Uh, and here's the finished result. As you can see up close, you can see all those lines, all the texture. Uh, I'm actually really happy with how this turned out. Um, the colors are exactly how I wanted them to be. Uh, maybe the leaves could have been a little bit darker, but I will keep that in mind for next time. Now, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Now, if you like these um, fine liners, I am very happy to say that Arteza has given me a 10% off coupon code for you guys. It's in the description below and it's going to be valid until March 31st. It's going to be valid uh, for a month. So use it because there is a sale going on right now as well. So perhaps you can combine it. And uh, yeah, it's definitely worth it, in my opinion. Thank you so, so very much for watching, guys. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.